The dogs have overrun Jeff's kitchen. The dogs have jumped up on the stove and turned the gas on. That is dangerous. Jeff attempts to cook a nice meal for dinner. Jeff went to culinary school, and he's actually a really good cook. Um, but this kitchen in this house is the dog's kitchen. <laughs> Jimmy. Ooh, ooh. Jimmy. Jim. Jim, come on. That scares me. Yeah. That was pretty this close. The open flame. There is one very, very big concern, too. And that is the dogs have gone into the kitchen and by mistake have jumped up on the stove and turned the gas on. That is dangerous. OK. Making things more difficult, Melissa is constantly treating the dogs in the kitchen. And so now, uh, already hard task of me cooking and trying to clean. I have to oh, sorry, clamor over and trip over dogs and um, get Ow. dust and stuff in my well-prepared food that I'd rather not have in there. Yeah. I definitely get frustrated. I've learned to live with it, obviously, but I blame Melissa for you know not being able to eat at home. Unlike Jeff, the dogs get plenty of enjoyment out of their mealtime. Okay, you guys ready? Are you ready for dinner? <gasps> Whose bowl is this? Whose bowl is this? Tony's bowl. Mm, good boy. It does get a little annoying sometimes when I'm out and I have to stop my day and come all the way home to feed them because I like to feed them at 6 o'clock every night. I do at times wish that Jeff did more with the dogs. Sometimes they get really stressed out. Even though he's home, I'll have to come home and feed them. <laughs> Okay. okay. Come on, Jimmy. Right? Once mealtime begins, it's clear why Jeff avoids this chore. All right, come on. Let's go back. So next, I feed Charles, who is in that corner. Sorry. Come on, Charles. Come on, Charles. Come on, Charles. Okay. Okay. Good boy. And now I have Sylvester, who is actually in the office. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Okay. Come on, Tony. Little Tony. Here, little Tony. Feeding time is chaotic. OK, ready, Donnie? Come on. Come on. OK, come on, Ben. OK, there you go. Well, that's a little manic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Has it always been like that? It's usually a lot worse. They get crazy. So um, it's really difficult to find anybody else to feed them. I think it is ridiculous that Melissa has to come all the way home, feed the dogs, and then go all the way back to whatever she's doing. Because even though Jeff's here, he won't feed them. <laughs> Your kitchen, you're a chef. You've trained for years to be a chef. You've got a house now, you've got a great kitchen, and you can't cook in your kitchen. Your dogs are very confused because there's a lack of consistency. You've given up. You say one thing, you say another thing, Jeff. And so there's a little bit of anarchy. I'm completely up for any suggestions. I mean, it, especially because she's listening right now. Um, if I got to feed the freaking dogs, I'll feed the freaking dogs. I mean, that's fine. Next, Victoria wants to show Jeff how to keep dogs out of his kitchen. I set up the gate for two reasons. One, so that Jeff could cook in his kitchen. Two so that the dogs, when the couple are out, can't go into the kitchen, jump up on the stove, and turn the gas on. Oh, Jimmy! Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think you need this, Jeff, because as a chef, you need to have your kitchen back. And it would be awesome to have my kitchen back. I understand, though. Sometimes you'd like to leave the door open and be working in there, but having no dogs come which is why I want to teach you the out command. OK. Jeff and I went into the kitchen, and I told Jeff to start preparing some food. We're using body blocking. If you see a dog coming in, what you're going to do is you're going to walk into their space, and you're going to point, and you're going to say, out. OK? OK, go for it. Claim your space. Out. Out. There you go. Lovely. Out. Our little Jimmy, he's a puppy. So he definitely put Jeff to the test. Out. Tell him good boy. Good boy. All right, now you come in, Melissa. 
Now, of course, when I go in the kitchen, all of the dogs follow. So in I go, and in comes Sylvester. Out. Out. And Tony. Out. And Bobby. It was one after another. She's just so little. <laughs> Every dog is having its turn of just testing what happens if I owe, Out. OK? After just 12 minutes, Melissa and Jeff have successfully reclaimed their kitchen. Now look. Look, they're almost all falling asleep. Jeff is able to take the pizza out of the oven, cut it up, and we started to eat it, and no dogs came into the kitchen. That was probably the only peaceful piece of pizza, or anything for that matter, I've ever had in my kitchen. I can't wait to cook a meal. I was completely impressed that the out training worked and got the dogs out of the kitchen. It's pretty amazing. Now that Melissa and Jeff can enjoy a meal in peace, Victoria wants to bring the same calm to the dogs' dinner time. When I've seen Melissa feed, it's a frenzy. It's crazy. And I wanted to keep this dinner time calm. Feeding time is absolute insanity. So I want to just inject a little bit of calmness back into it. So what I'd like you to do is, first of all, we're going to change the setup a tiny bit. Not ball placement, but setup of where the dogs are going to be while you're preparing the food. Oh, OK. First of all, I wanted to put some of the dogs already in their places, and that meant putting Donnie and Vinny outside and Jimmy in his crate. From now on, all the dogs will be fed in the smaller kitchen in the back of the house. Prepare the food like you normally would. OK. Don't sing and don't talk. You're making them very excited. Yeah. By singing and, oh, it's time to eat. Right. Yay. And then the dogs go, yay. Once the food was prepared, I took some of the bowls, took it into the office, and put them down for Charles and Sylvester. By feeding the most intense dogs first, that's Sylvester and Charles, you completely dampen any kind of explosive reaction. Then Melissa fed the other three dogs in the kitchen. Joey? Yeah, lovely. Then it was time to feed Jimmy in the crate, and then we got the balls to feed Donnie and Vinny outside. Good boy, Vinny. Oh, peace. Peace. We did it. The dogs were calm. You have to teach Jeff. Yes. Because I don't want you coming back from work, wherever you are, coming back to feed the dogs at six and then going back even when he's here. Ridiculous. That's not going to happen anymore. If you can do this, Jeff can do this. Oh, it's not that hard. <sighs> I think I'm going to be able to do this on a daily basis. Be calm and feed the dogs without any aggression. That evening, Jeff is able to cook in a dog-free kitchen while Melissa keeps the dogs behind the gate. Out. The kitchen training is going well. Um, it's nice to have no dogs in the in the kitchen. It, it feels like it's a, a little bit cleaner. I'm pretty impressed. Good boys. But it soon becomes clear that Jeff isn't keeping to his part of the bargain. Melissa is doing the majority of the feeding. Good job. What is he doing? Jeff, how many times have you helped with the feeding? Um, I help almost every time. But have you ever done it yourself? Since you've been? Yeah. No, I haven't. OK. She has to train me. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to do that today. All right. I want you to give him the tools, and then you get out of there. I don't want to okay. see your face. I want to see you, Jeff, feeding the dogs all by yourself. Take the feeding away, Jeff. And you know what? Yeah. You get out of the kitchen. I can't help. Yeah, Jeff. No, nope, you can't help. I think I could feed the dogs. I don't think it'd be a problem. Um, I might get the ratios wrong. I might get the, you know, put the wrong dish in front of the wrong dog. But, you know, I think they'll eat the food. Charles doesn't mind. Charles, here you go, buddy. Joey and Bobby. There. Best. Good The feeding is awesome. It seems to be working really well. It's easier and faster, which is, you know, it's a blessing. No craziness, no running back and forth. 
And now, Jeff, wonderful job. No excuse about not feeding those dogs at all. Back at the house, Victoria wants the couple to enjoy a romantic meal together to celebrate their hard work. OK, Jeff, cook. So while Melissa gets ready, Jeff gets to work in the kitchen. Ah, I think I have everything. Nice tablecloth, uh, candles, flowers, wine. I think I got everything. Ooh. With the dogs content to stay out of his way, Jeff can show off his skills and make things up to Melissa for not helping out during the week. Everything's ready. It's pretty good. There were flowers and candles and wine. So it was pretty exciting. It was an unexpected surprise. Thank you so much, Victoria. I can't tell you how much this means to me. It's beautiful. You're welcome. And um, I'm going to leave you now. OK. I have to say, you've worked very hard. And you have a huge job. You have eight dogs. And that is no easy task for anybody. But I have to say, I don't think there's a better place for them to be. Your dogs are extremely happy. You've rescued them from awful situations, and now they're going to live the rest of their days in peace and harmony. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. This house was so chaotic. There was never a moment of silence. We couldn't get anything done. And now our house is calm. All right, bye, guys. Bye, bye Victoria. You. Thank you. you so much. Bye, sweet. Yeah, we have our lives back. Ooh. Dogs are happier, they're happier, the whole household is calm. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.